Welcome back. We now have the floor partition function, which is supposed to be the overall algorithm for splitting the floor, but we haven't split anything yet. All we have is the, uh, a stack that we've created and added a single floor node to, and then we just do a while loop and we pop things off the stack till it's empty, which so far is only one thing. Well, we need to check to see if the, uh, the thing we're popping off the stack is splittable. In other, in other words, we need to see if, if we should split it. So we're going to implement the should split node function. And it's one of these ones that we declared here, should split node. So why don't we go ahead and implement that now. So you'll see it's got this default return false. We're going to keep that down there at the bottom. So by default, it just returns false. We just need to perform some sort of check to see if we should return true. And if we, re if we return true somewhere up here, well then this will end out of the function and we'll never reach the return false. So if we ever reach a return true up here, then that's fine that we have a return false down here. It won't be reached. So what are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna get the corner coordinates of the end node. And uh, that's going to be used to check um, to see if we should split it. So let's make an f corner coordinates struct called corner coordinates. And it's going to be set equal to the in node get corner coordinates. That's why we created that, that getter back in the floor node function get corner coordinates. Okay, so we've got our corner coordinates. Now what we'd like to do is check to see the orientation that we're trying to split. We're attempting to split either horizontally or vertically. So we're going to say if orientation is equal, double equals, to E split orientation, double colon, and ESO horizontal. Now remember, we made this a scoped enum, so we couldn't just say ESO horizontal like that. You'll see we get an error. But thanks to being a scoped enum, we have to double. We have to use the double colons with the name of the enum. That way, it's um, this avoids being able to have multiple enums. Uh, well, it allows you to have multiple enums with the same enum constant name without having to confuse them for each other because you're fully qualifying the name. So if we're splitting horizontally, what are we going to do? Well, first we need to know what the floor length is. So it's an int32 called floor length because this is, again, in grid units. And it's going to be equal to corner coordinates dot, uh, and let's, let's say lower right uh, y minus corner coordinates dot lower right I'm sorry, upper left Y. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we're splitting horizontally, which means we're going to draw a line horizontally across the middle of this rectangle, and we're going to uh, split it into a top and a bottom. Now, we need to check to make sure that the rectangle is tall enough, that it's um, in the Y direction, that it's at least the minimum number of grid squares uh, tall, or we could say, we could call it length, um, but we need to know that it's at least the minimum because if it's, if the minimum is say one grid square and it's only one grid square tall, well we can't split it. It's too small to split. And so this is going to give us the length. I guess we could say, we can call it length instead of, you know, height or something because it's flat on the ground. It's in the y direction. We'll call it length. So we're going to check to see if floor length is greater than room min y. If it is, then we should be able to split it. So this, this function, all its, its only job is to return true or false. And it should return true if we should be able to split it. So we're gonna return true in this case. Now we need an else and we're gonna do an else if, and it's gonna be if orientation is equal to E split orientation vertical. Now if it's vertical, we're gonna get a floor width, int32 floor width, and that's gonna be set equal to corner coordinates dot lower right x minus corner 
coordinates dot upper left x. And this will give us the width. This will give us how many grid squares wide uh, in the x direction this rectangle is. And we're going to just simply check if floor width is greater than room min x. And if it is, return true. Okay, so we don't, so far we don't perform any random uh, determinations to stop splitting early. This will basically always return true as long as if we're splitting horizontally, if it's uh, long enough in the y direction, meaning it's greater than the room min y, or if we're splitting vertically, we'll return true if it's uh, at least the room min x, if it's uh, floor width is greater than room min x. If it's, if it's uh, room min x and say that's one, one, one grid unit uh, long, or sorry, wide, then we will not split. So if these do not get reached here, then we will reach the end and return false. So why don't we use this here in the partition function. So we'll scroll back up to the partition function. And what we're going to do is as soon as we pop a node off the stack and store it in A, I'm going to go ahead and call should split node. So let's, let's just pick an orientation for now. Let's just say if should split node A and should split node takes an orientation. So E split orientation, and let's just pick horizontal. And we're going to say if should split node A, and this actually did not need a closing parentheses. And we're going to say if should split node A, we did need a closing parentheses there, uh, this will return um, true as long as the width of the node is greater than room min x, which is actually we're splitting horizontally, so it's going to check the y, right? And it's going to see if the room min, if the uh, the length of the of the node is greater than room min y, it's going to be five, right? Because in procedural room, uh, or I'm sorry, rather in uh, floor.cpp in the constructor, the floor grid size is going to be five in the x and the y. The room min x is one. So this is going to be true because 5 is greater than 1. And in this case, we can simply move our UE log up here like so. Now, this doesn't do anything. It still just pops it off the stack, but it's going to check to see if it's splittable. And if the node shouldn't be split, what are we going to do? Well, if the node is no longer splittable, then what we need to do is add that node to the partition floor stack because the partition floor stack is going to keep all the end result uh, nodes, the ones that were not chunked away because they were split. So if, if we're not splitting, then we can have an else. So if should split node returns false, we'll have an else. And what are we going to do? We're going to say, say partitioned floor. That's the other stack. We're going to call push. And we're going to push A onto that stack. OK. And then we can simply do a UE log here and say pushing node onto partitioned floor. Onto partitioned floor stack. And then up here, we'll say popping a floor node off the floor node stack. OK, so like I said, we should be able to pop it off the stack because it's going to be a 5 by 5 node, and that's bigger than the minimum of 1 by 1. So if we push play, we'll see popping floor node off the floor node stack. OK, that's great. But what if we take the floor grid size and change the y to a 1? Remember, we're only trying to split horizontally here. And if we try to split horizontally and it's only got a grid size of 1, well, let's see what happens. We'll see pushing node onto partitioned floor stack. So instead of popping it, uh, well, we did pop it off the stack, of course. But instead of doing nothing, we actually pushed it onto the partitioned floor stack. So this is how it's going to go. We're basically going to um, keep popping nodes off the stack. 
We're going to check to see if they should be split. If so, we're going to split right here. So right here is where we're going to actually split the node and take care of what happens after that. However, if we pop something off the stack and it should not be split, then we will push it into the partitioned floor and that is going to store all the nodes that were finished splitting. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to use, uh, we're going to define our split attempt function, which is the function that will attempt to split a node. And that's gonna return uh, true if we successfully split and false if we don't. And that way we'll know whether or not we should, uh, we, should we have just split it. And we're also going to take care of what happens when we split the node. So we'll do that in the next video. Um, we'll see you in the next video. And if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Um, hit the bell for notifications and thumbs up if you are enjoying the content. See you in the next video.